Hi. Just so we know, just a reminder, in this, in this unit, what we've been focusing on is solving polynomials by factoring, right? We've learned all these different methods for factoring. Um, so, anyways, so let everybody just watch. Don't take notes on this part. I'm reviewing everything we've learned so far so that when we get to the test mm -hmm. review, it is pretty breezy for you. If I said to you, find the zeros of the polynomial, this is going to be the back page of the test. Find the zeros of the polynomial, don't we factor it depending on what type of polynomial we're looking at? Right? So we have all these different methods of factoring. So look at this one. Would it be wise to multiply that out if I'm trying to solve it? No, because then we'd have to refactor it. And what do I end up back here? Okay, so isn't this one already factored? So now I have a linear and a quadratic. I know how to solve those. We would set x plus 2 equal to 0. We would set x squared minus x minus 2 equal to 0. Solve for x. So when we get negative 2, and then we could factor this. What multiplies to be negative 2 adds up to be negative 1. 1 times 2, negative 2. Doesn't this piece quick factor? x plus 1 and x minus 2. So where are my other two solutions? x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. How many solutions should I have? Three, because it would have been degree three if it would have been in standard form. Okay, next one. What method of factoring should I use for this one? Greatest common factor. Awesome. So I pull out x, and wouldn't I get this and this? Solve. Don't we set each of those equal to zero and solve? x, didn't we just factor this? x minus, no, I want x plus one and x minus two. So now what are my solutions? Zero, negative one. 2, degree 3, I have all three solutions. Moving on. What method of factoring would I use for this one? Grouping. Grouping. If there's four terms, we factor by grouping. So we'd pull out x squared. Left is x plus 2. We'd pull out positive 4. Left is x plus 2. Isn't my safe haven the same? Pull it out. Let's solve this one. x equals what? And then right here, let's not do it in our head. x squared equals negative 4, right? So then x is equal to plus and minus 2i, degree 3, should have three solutions, and I do. Okay, we're going to hopefully ace this test. Okay, on the same part of the test, I'm going to say solve the polynomial by factoring. How do we factor this one? Using the cute little method we learned last time, right? Two perfect cubes. Cube root the front thing, cube root the back thing, not including the sign. Isn't the front thing x? The cube root of x cubed, x, cube root of 1. One, and then we do the front times the front. And then the front times the back. The back times the back. And then if this is minus, this is. Minus. The next one's opposite. Left. And this one's always. And now wouldn't I set that equal to zero, set that equal to zero, and solve? So when I get x equals one, and then quadratic formula for the other one. I'm not going to do it. We practiced that last time. All good? Okay, yeah. hey, what about this one? What method would I use to factor this? Yep, you plug in. So what we're doing is a u substitution. We're going to say let x squared be u. So then we get u squared minus 3u minus 4. We factor this to be u minus 4 times u plus 1. And then we'll, we have x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 1. So that was just a quick review of everything we've gone over in this unit. But then when we continue to solve. So I'm going to do it quickly. x is equal to plus or minus 2. And then x is equal to, nope. Plus or minus i. Once again, I strongly recommend not doing it in your head. Subtract 1 and then square root it. Okay? So don't do it in your head on the test like I just did. I just did it because I was here to catch your mistakes, but I won't on the test. Okay, cool. Now understand, everybody, I was just pointing something out. All of those polynomials we can solve by factoring because we know how to factor them. However, there are polynomials that do not factor by any method we know how. So everybody look. For example, on the test, if I said find the zeros, you would say there's four terms. I'm going to try factoring by grouping. Let's look. Pull out x squared. Wouldn't we be left with x minus 2? What's the greatest thing in this group? 1. And then left is 5x minus 3. Is our safe haven the same? So it doesn't factor by grouping. We cannot solve by factoring by grouping. We would have to solve by the method we're learning today. There isn't, no. We have to learn it's the most unlike method because it's the hardest, but it's at least we can solve it, okay? Everybody look right here. You see how there's no greatest common? I'm trying to point something out so you don't make this mistake. 
Everybody, this is not a quadratic. You cannot do what multiplies to be a times c and adds up to be b. So, yeah, because it's x cubed, not x squared, right? So everybody, there's not a greatest common factor. It is not two perfect cubes. It is not quadratic in form. We do not know how to factor this. We would have to solve by the method that I'm teaching you today. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. Okay, cool. Here is the method. So it's called the rational root theorem. And then later we'll learn the conjugate root theorem. Now, before we get started, what confuses people is when I'm talking, they don't know what I'm saying. So we're going to talk about some words that you need to know what I'm saying. Stop tapping the pen. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so everybody, these words you have to know because then it will make more sense of what I'm talking about. Otherwise, you will get lost. So, everybody, rational means can be written as a fraction. So look, this is a rational number. Everybody understand? So if I said x equals two-thirds, that would be a rational solution. Does everybody agree? Rational means can be written as a fraction. x equals one-sixth, isn't that a rational solution? X equals negative 4. Technically, it's a fraction. Negative 4 is the same thing as negative 4 over 1. So that's still a rational solution. How about X equals 5? Is that a rational solution? What about this? Yes. Okay. Now remember, roots of a polynomial means solution. We have two types of solutions, real or imaginary. If it's a real solution, it will cross the x-axis. If they're imaginary, then they're up here not crossing the x-axis. So, for example, look at this x plus 2 cubed. You see how it's crossing right here? It would have one real solution. So it must have how many imaginary? 2, since there's degree 3. Shouldn't we have three solutions? Does everybody see? Yeah. All right, awesome. So everybody, if I say to you, this is what we're dealing with today, our rational roots, wouldn't that mean fractional solutions? Yeah. Don't fractions always cross the x-axis? Yeah. Those are all real numbers. So these are rational roots. They're all also real, but I'm not going to say that. Okay, awesome. That is the rational root theorem. The rational root theorem allows us to find the rational root theorem allows us to find possible rational roots, possible fractional solutions of a polynomial. So I'm going to tell you how it works, and then you'll see how it works with an example. So everybody, p over q are the possible rational roots. Now I'll tell you where p and q come from. Q is the leading term's coefficient. Why are we talking? Q is the leading terms coefficient. So my Q would be 2. Now P is the constant coefficient. It has to be a constant. So this would not be P if 4 had an X with it. Does everybody see what I'm saying? If it's a constant, then that's our P. So P is our constant coefficient, and Q is our leading terms coefficient. So this is how you find the possible rational roots. What you're going to do is you're going to first go down and you're going to list out all the factors of P. Remember, factors mean what multiplies to be P. We're not going to group in the sign. We're just looking at 4 here. So what are what things multiply to be 4? 1 and 2 and 4. We've listed out factors of 4. Now, we don't know if they're positive or negative. So we're going to write plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, plus and minus 4. These are all factors of 4. Does everybody see? Now we're going to list out factors of Q. So everybody, factors of 2, plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2. Very good. Now the possible rational solutions of this polynomial will be some P divided by some Q. So let's list out all the possible rational solutions here. Take all your P's and divide them by all your Q's. So look, 1 divided by 1. So plus and minus 1. Guys, if this has a rational root, it could be 1 and it could be negative 1. That's a possibility. Does everybody see? Now we're going to do this P. So 1 divided by this Q. You have to do all P's divided by all Q's. So 1 divided by 2 is a half, right? So if it's crossing the x-axis at a rational place, it might happen at a half or negative a half as well. Does everybody see how this is listing out possibilities? Now I've taken care of 1. So 2 divided by 1 is... 2, it could cross it to or negative 2, and then look, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we've already listed 1, haven't we? Okay, we've taken care of 2. 4 divided by 1 is 4. It could cross at positive 4 or negative 4. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. We've already listed it. So guys, if this has rational solutions, they're going to be one of those and only one of those. 
There are no other rational roots. These are the only possibilities. Yes. So what we'll do is we, yeah, now we can actually find, okay, which ones are they actually? So we could do this many different ways. Couldn't I take all of these like one and negative one and go through and say, okay, I'm going to do synthetic division with one. If the remainder is zero, don't we know one is the solution? Does everybody see how we're going to use that? I could test it with negative one. If negative one, if we divide by negative one and our remainder is zero, then negative one was an actual rational root. Okay. Sweet. Let's do our first example. Number three. Here we go. So let's read the instructions. It says, use the rational root theorem to list out possible rational roots. That's even like exactly how it's worded on the test. What are the possible rational roots? So you'd go through and say, okay, this is a constant. So that is my P. The leading coefficient is my Q. Now I highly recommend always listing out P first because then it falls naturally because we're going to be doing P divided by Q. So I would start out with listing out P on top. Factors of 1, plus and minus 1, right? Now, factors of Q, so things that multiply to be 2, plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, right? So now, part of our answer, if you read the first part of the instructions, it says list out the possible rational roots. So we're going to go off to the side and say that's P over Q. All possible P's divided by Q. So 1 divided by 1 is 1. And then 1 divided by 2. So 1 divided by 2 is 1 half, right? If it's crossing the x-axis at a rational place, it will happen at 1 or at negative 1, at a half or negative a half, or at multiple rows. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we're going to circle that answer because it says, what are the possible rational roots? That's going to be its own problem on the test. Then the next problem will say, find any actual rational roots. There's many ways to do this. So on this first one, what I would suggest is, let's just, there's not that many. Isn't there only four? Let's test out. Well, let's try one, do synthetic division. So two, five, four, one. Let's also do negative one. Let's test these out. Two, five, four, one. So let's start there. Let's start testing these. So dropping down two. We add straight down. Two times one is two. We add straight down and get. Add straight down, we get seven. Seven times one. Add straight down. Oh, yep, 11 times one. Add straight down. Isn't that my remainder? Yeah. So one is not an actual rational root. So I'm going to go up here and write, make a little box for actual rational roots. So we know that one isn't, okay? We're not going to add one. And it was a possibility, but it wasn't one. Let's test negative one. Add straight down, two times negative one. Add straight down, three times negative one. Add straight down, one times negative one. Add straight down, zero, okay. So isn't negative one definitely a solution? So in our actual rational roots, we'll write x equals negative 1. Now, there are two ways to continue. I could test a half, and I could test negative a half. However, there is a smarter, I think, easier way to test. Remember, what if there's two imaginary solutions? What if that's our only actual? Does that make sense? Or what if there's two irrational? So I'm just looking today for rational roots. So guys, don't we take, didn't we take degree three divided by degree one and get a degree two? Yeah. So let's look at this new quadratic we have. So we have two X squared plus three X plus two plus one, right? Yeah. Is everybody with me? Now think about it. If, the, if I said to you, find the other two solutions, if we try to factor this and it factors, think about it. If something factors, isn't it always whole number or fractional solution? If it doesn't factor, wouldn't we have to quadratic formula that bad boy? Yeah. And if we need the quadratic formula, it's because we had imaginary and irrational solution. So if we need the quadratic formula, then that's the only rational root. Because so I don't care. It didn't say find all the roots. It said find rational roots. Do you see what I'm saying? So let's see if it factors. If it does, let's find the other two by factoring. 
Here we go. What multiplies to be A times C? What multiplies to be 2? And that adds up to be 3, everybody. 1 and 2. So now we'll say, okay, it does factor. So there's going to be two other rational roots. So we've got to keep going. So we would quickly long factor. Drop and break. But this should be really quick for us at this point. So 2x squared. So we insert these in. I'm going to strategically go plus 2x plus x plus 1. Factor by grouping. Once again, I'm going to go quick through this because that's why we spent so much extra time at the beginning of the year. So when we get to stuff like this, I can go quick. I pull out 2x. Then left is x plus 1. What would I pull out here? Then left is x plus 1. My safe haven is the same, so I pull out x plus 1. And then left is 2x plus 1. Now we can find the other two rational solutions. If it factored, they always come out to be whole number or fractional solutions. That would be a rational solution. <coughs> x plus 1 equals 0. So x equals negative 1, and then subtract 1 divided by 2, right? x equals negative 1 half. Wasn't that a possible rational root? I don't have to Hey, guys. Wasn't that a possibility? Okay, so our actual rational roots, didn't we get negative 1 again? So x equals negative 1, multiplicity of 2, and x equals negative, or what's a positive half? Negative one half. We've listed out all the rational roots. Yes. Wait, I'll tell you what would be allowed or not. So let me tell you what I would, like for example, this is how I require my honors class to not even touch a calculator. However, I am gonna let you tell you what would be acceptable in here, but you'll have to see. Okay, let's do another one. Number one. So I'll show you what would be considered acceptable in our class, okay? So it's going to be a way to kind of cheat, but not cheat. So let's it says find the possible rational roots. So let's look where you can do this one. Here's my Q. Here's my P, right? Listing out factors of P, plus and minus 1, plus and minus 3, plus and minus 5. Factors of Q, plus and minus 1. So possible rational roots, P over Q, plus and minus 1. 1 over 1 is 1. 3 over 1, 5 over 1, right? So everybody see? So 1, 3, 5. So this would be our first thing we need to circle since it said find the possible rational root. Now what I am okay with, so in, in honors, I, they would go through and test all these. I am okay with you then pulling up your graphing calculator and typing this into your graphing calculator. So let's do that. Go to y equals, type it in. Now one of our possibilities was plus and minus 15. So I need to make sure I see that part out on the x-axis, right? Because it might cross there. So I'm going to go to my window, and for x min, I'm going to make it like negative 20, and x max positive 20 to make sure I can see. If it did cross at 15, I need to have my window big enough that I could see it. I hit graph. Okay, definitely not crossing out here at 15 or negative 15, right? You see what I'm saying? It really, I just went to my window and made my x min negative 20 because I could cross at 15, negative 15, and I could cross at positive 15, so that's why I made x min negative 20 and x max 20. Hey, graph, where does it look like it's crossing possibly? At negative what? what? Negative 2? Was that even a possibility, though? No, so that is not crossing at negative 2. I promise you. You could even test it out, and you would not get a remainder of 0. So it could be negative 2.00000001, not a rational root. Can't be written with correction. Does that make sense? Okay, where else does it look like it's crossing at 2? That wasn't even a possibility. What about negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Is it? Maybe? But, like, let's zoom in there. Let's look. It's not crossing at negative 5. How could I know for sure? I could go through and test with negative 5, right? 1, 5, negative 2, negative 15. 1, negative 5, 0, 0, negative 2. I'm just showing you 10. Do, I get, do you see how my remainder is not 0? It is not crossing at negative 5. So there are no other possibilities. There are no rational roots. If there was, it would be one of those point places. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So no rational roots. 
Ding, ding, ding. Ya. Crap, that's what I forgot to write. Good catch, Olivia. Plus or minus 15, wasn't that a possibility? So don't forget to add that into your possibilities. That would have been sad. I forget that. I'm glad you caught that and said something. Was anybody else wondering? Okay, just making sure that at least somebody caught it. Okay. Well, then you would have. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's do another one before lunch. Not this one. Go to number five. Okay, go to number five. So everybody, we would list out possible rational roots. Let's go quick. Q, P. List out factors of P, everybody. Plus and minus one. Factors of Q, plus and minus one, plus and minus five. So our possible rational roots are one and one fifth. All P's divided by Q's. Now take your graphing calculator, type this in, and tell me where it looks like it might be crossing the x-axis. I like to look for whole numbers first. So you're graphing that and seeing where it looks like it might be crossing. But then we got to test it by, by synthetic division. That is required. One, negative one. Anywhere? Might be one. Let's see if it is. So we put in one. Let's test it out. Five, negative 11, seven, negative one. Does everybody agree that it looks like it might be crossing at one? So let's test that one first. So do you see how this just allows us to know which one to test first? Kind of? Okay. So we drop down five, multiply up, add straight down. Um, okay, let's keep going here. You're right, it does. And then we add straight down and get zero. Okay, everybody. So in our actual answer, we get x is equal to one. Now we've got to see if there are more. Now once again, use this method. Degree three divided by degree one. Wasn't that degree two right here? So we have five x squared minus six x plus one. Let's see if this quadratic factors. If it does, I'm gonna have more rational roots. If it doesn't, then to solve it, I would need quadratic formula and that would give me imaginary and irrational roots. So we would be done. Let's see if it does factor. One multiplies to be five and adds up to be negative six. Yeah, can I quick factor? No. So quickly drop and break. Here you go. Go quick. 5x squared minus 5x minus x plus 1, right? Group the first two, group the second two. Pull out the greatest thing in common. And then left is x minus 1. Pull out negative 1. Left is x minus 1. So we'll pull out x minus 1. And left is 5x minus 1. So let's find our other rational roots. x equals 1. So we'd say multiplicity of two, and then x equals one fifth, and that was a possibility, so we know we've done it right. We've listed out all their possible rational, the actual rational roots, I should say. Nope. Once again, let's tr not try to do it in our heads. Use algebra, so add one. Five x equals one, divide by five. So I highly recommend not doing it in your head, yes. Okay. Sweet. So I, um, I'm going to give you a second to try 1 through 16. Ready, go. Well, we have, okay, but what I want you to do is, we are going to do some more examples after lunch. It's shorter than it looks. A lot of these are really easy. So everybody, do, don't do number four right now. Don't cross it out, but skip it because that's the hardest one. So don't start out with the hardest one. It's just long. Skip four for right now. Come back to that very last. Look at this one. Let's just to refresh our brains. Now it's been um, a long. I actually don't need them today. Thank you. Okay, so let's refresh our brains after lunch. Here we go. So we would say, okay, there's no other. Well, it asks us to find the possible rational roots. Factors of P. Factors of Q. Here is my Q, here's my P. So I listed out factors of P and Q. All possible rational roots, P over Q. One over one is one. Yeah. Oh, why do I keep forgetting that? You're right. So then we have plus and minus one, plus 
plus and minus 2, plus and minus 5, plus and minus 10. These are the possible rational roots. Circle that. Now let's find any actual. Once again, go ahead and graph it. See where it looks like it might be crossing. And then I would require you to test it by synthetic division to get full points. So graph it. Where does it look like it might be crossing? So we can test it first. In your calculator to me, it looks like it's probably crossing a negative two. So I'm going to test that out. Now, guess what a lot of people miss on the test, and some of you even missed it on the last test. I'm missing an x squared, aren't I? You got to put in the zero or your remainder is not going to work out. One, zero, one, ten. Yes. That would be bad news. Add straight down. One times negative two is negative two. Add straight down. Negative two times negative two is four. Add straight down. Five times negative two is add straight down zero. So I can write x equals negative two. Now from here, I highly recommend not continuing to test, but looking at this new quadratic here. Degree 3 divided by degree 1 is degree 2, so x squared minus 2x plus 5. If this quadratic factors, we're going to have two more rational roots. If it does not, then we're done. We have found all the rational roots. Because it would take the quadratic formula to solve it, and that's imaginary and irrational roots. Well, multiply to be 5 and adds up to be negative 2. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So that's the only actual rational root. And we're done. Yes. No, but that's actually our next lesson. I just say solve the polynomial, so then we would keep going. But we're today in the second part. It says find any actual rational root. We would get to stop. Good question. Okay. Now I just want to show you number two, just because it's a nightmare. Unless you, re you really don't want me to. If you'd rather go for it, I'll let you. Yes. You want to do it? Oh, you want to do Oh, you started it. Yeah, it's a nightmare, isn't it? Okay, let's go over it. Here's Q. Here's P. Listing out factors of P. Here we go. Plus and minus 1. Plus and minus 2. Plus and minus... Wait, this is P. Remember, I always like to personally list out P first so that P's on top. Yeah, it makes it easier to see. Yeah, good point. Does everybody see why I do P's first? Do you? Q's. Let's list out all the factors of 36. Don't talk. Just tell me besides that. Okay? 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 Let's go in order. So I like the 6, the 9. All right. Let's start listing out all our possible P over Q's. My arm is already tired. 1 over 1 is 1. Now look, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 sixth, 1 ninth, 1 twelfth, 1 eighteenth, 1 thirty-sixth. You write it. Because uh, copying down what I have is going to take you longer. Right? 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, and go for it. No, we do. Remember that we can do hard things in here. We can. Obviously, if you ace your test, that means you can. That's it. You're switching to college prep, can we? Okay, I forgive you. Okay. Now, 2 over 1 is 2. Now, look, 2 over 2 is 1. We've already listed that. 2 thirds. Need that. Okay, I'll let you catch it. Now, I'm doing 2 over 1 is 2. 2 over 2 is 1. I've already listed that. 2 thirds. 2 fourths. A half is already there. Two six. One third is already there. Two ninths. Nope, we gotta list that. Hey, too much talking once again. And then two twelfths is one six. Two eighteenths is one ninth. And one two over thirty six is one over eighteen. So we're good. Let's do four. Four over one. We need that. Four over two is two. We've already listed that. Four thirds. Looks like I need that one. Then four fourths is one, four sixths is two thirds. I've listed that. Four ninths, I need that. And then four over 12 is one third, four over 18 is one. Four over 
Four over eighteen is yeah, duh, two ninths. My be my bad. Wait, what? Two over eight, four over eighteen. I just can't do it in my head. I got to Yeah, it was two ninths. Okay. And then four over thirty-six. Just if you need to, four divided by thirty-six math enter enter. But it's two over. It's one ninth. You're right. Duh. Sorry, I'm digging too hard because that's a lot of them. Okay, there's my possible P over Qs. Now let's find any actual rational roots. So everybody, I'm going to pray that it crosses at a whole number place. How about you? Ready, go. Graph it. See where it crosses. Graph it. Hurry. Where is it crossing at a whole number place? And then I'm going to have a quadratic and solve for the rest by quadratic. No, we'll just hit graph and then look where it looks like it's crossing. So the x-axis. Yes. Because that's our solutions, right? Where it crosses the x-axis on our solutions. Where is it crossing? Okay, it looks like negative 4. Let's, let's make sure. Did everybody else get that it could be negative 4? Why are we all talking so much? Are you trying to figure out math? Okay, then well, that's pretty straightforward. Does it look like it's crossing at negative 4? Let's try that. Here we go. 36, 144, making sure I'm not missing any value, which I'm not. And then minus 4. Here we go. Drop this down. 36 times negative 4 is negative 144. Add straight down. Zero. Zero times negative four. Zero, add straight down. Negative one times negative four. Add straight down. Zero, hallelujah. So you would write actual rational roots are x equals negative four. Now let's solve the quadratic using the most appropriate method. Degree three divided by degree one is degree two. So we have 36 x squared minus one equals zero. We can solve by factoring, or isn't there an easier way? Add one. Next step. Divide by 36. So we have x squared equals 1 over 36. You tell me what's the next step. Square root, both sides of the equation. Root cancels out the power. x is equal to, don't we split it up? Square root of 1 over square root of 36. What's the square root of 1? 1, what's the square root of 36? So my other two rational roots, was that an I? Was it irrational? No. So those are rational roots. Wasn't that a possibility? So our other actual rational roots was positive 1, 6 and negative 1, 6. Yeah. Yeah, so well, it's going to cross that literally at the decimal negative of 6, which is like negative 0.1 or whatever. You could type into your calculator negative 1, 6 to see what the decimal is. And it's crossing at positive. So it's going to come and then cross back up, right? Yes. So it's crossing at negative 1, 6, 1, 6, and then negative 4. So isn't it? Isn't our end behavior down and up? Down and up? Down and up? So it's going to go with me. Okay, sweet. Okay, continue on 1 through 16. Continue on 1 through 16. Check them off as you get them. Go, go, go. Here we go. So, next step here. This is called the conjugate root theorem. So, we've learned how to find possible rational roots and list out rational roots. Now, we're moving on to just a new topic here. This is called the conjugate root theorem. We already actually know this. So, it says, if you have, this is the rule, here is the theorem. If you have irrational roots, now irrational means cannot be written as a fraction, so that would be radicals that don't break down. These are irrational. Everybody understand? This cannot be written as a fraction, so it is irrational. So if you have irrational solutions or imaginary solutions, then their conjugate must also be a solution. So, for example, if x equals root 2 is a solution, its conjugate 
x equals negative root 2 also has to be a solution. Think about y. Quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus and minus the square root. So if you have a positive square root, you also have a negative square root. Does everybody see? So if x equals 5 minus root 3, that's irrational. So it's conjugate. 5 plus root 3 is also a root. Conjugate means change of sign in between the terms. Only in between. So if x equals negative 3 plus root 3 is a solution, then x equals negative 3 minus root 3 is a solution. Did I change the first term? No. No. Okay. Also, the conjugate root theorem says if you have imaginary solution, it's conjugate is also a solution. So x equals negative 4 plus 2i is a solution here. What's my solution here? Yep. All right. So everybody, that is only true, though. The conjugate root theorem is only true for irrational or imaginary, not whole numbers, not fractions. Okay. So everybody, look at these ones. Let me show you what people do on the test. If I said to you, list out, given these three roots, list out any additional roots, we would say x equals what? There's an additional root, x equals? And then guess what people do? Guarantee at least one person in this class does it. They go x equals negative 5. But that's a red flag because the rule does not work unless it's imaginary or irrational. So the only two additional roots here would have been these two. Does everybody see? Okay, cool. Let's do these ones on the test. I mean, on the, whatever. On the assignment. Look how easy, make sure you read the directions though. You don't want to do it wrong. It says a polynomial function. Back. Sorry, they're all over the place. Number 17, it says a polynomial function has the given root. Find two additional roots. So what's my other root here? And what's my additional root here? Yep, done. That's all it asks us to do. So that is what we did and we're done. What's my additional root here? And what's my additional root here? Okay, I need you in the next 15 seconds to finish up 17 through 22 before I move on. Well, let's read the directions on this one because you don't want to not read and just assume. So it says, write a polynomial in standard form with these given roots. Now, if we're given roots, that means we have x equals, because they're solutions. So we have x equals negative 5 and x equals 3i. Now, it's not going to tell us, but what do we know is also a root? Yep, negative 3i. Should I write x equals net 5? No. No. Oh, oh. no. Okay. Now it wants the polynomial in standard form. So isn't this where we work backwards? It's saying these are the solutions. What's the original polynomial? This is the last, similar to the last question on the test, wasn't it? Here we go. So before they were set equal to a number, it used to be equal to 0. So let's go backwards. We have x plus 5 equals 0. Now, before this was set equal to 3i, technically it was set equal to 0. So minus 3i, minus 3i. So we have x minus 3i equals 0. Right here, we need it equal to 0, so we'll add 3i. So we have x plus 3i equals 0. Before they were split apart and equal to 0, they used to be multiplied together. Now this is not standard form, so let's put it in standard form. Now remember the rule. If you're multiplying three polynomials together, you multiply two together, combine like terms, multiply in the third. Everybody make yourself a little note on the side. If you're multiplying conjugates, do not, okay, everybody listen, a lot of people just go like this and they start multiplying those together. You're going to most likely get it wrong because you'll make an error somewhere. If you're ever multiplying conjugates, pick to personally multiply those together first. So make yourself a little note. If I'm ever multiplying conjugates, I should multiply those together first. Promise you, it'll be 10 times easier. You will, I don't think I've ever, I've seen like one person in my lifetime get it right doing it the other way. Just because it's easy to make errors. And it gets ugly. Yep, so let's go ahead and do this, yes. Yep, so x times x is? 
x times positive 3i is positive 3ix. Now negative 3i times x is negative 3ix. Negative 3i times positive 3i, a lot of people mess up right here. Negative 9i squared, right? I squared equals, nope, negative one. So isn't this really minus nine times negative one? That's really just plus nine. Okay, good, we've just taken care of that stuff. Now shouldn't we combine like terms? Those cancel out, which conjugates, middle terms will cancel out. So then we have x squared plus nine. Now didn't that come out nice and gorgeous? And doesn't that polynomial even make sense? If I solve that, wouldn't I set it equal to zero, subtract nine, square root it, plus and minus three i. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now we have to say, okay, great. Now I can multiply an x plus five and put it in standard form. Here we go. It is multiplication. So x times x squared, x cubed. x times positive nine, plus nine x, plus five x squared, plus 45, put it in standard form, x Q plus 5x squared plus 9x plus 45 and voila. There's the polynomial that gave us those solutions. So what we learned in this unit is given this, find the solutions. We would factor this one by grouping and get back here, wouldn't we? Back to the original. But this one, we were given the solutions, find the original polynomial. Okay, let's do another one. Number 25. So it says write a polynomial in standard form with these given roots. So x equals 3i, what do we know without being told? Yep, and then x equals root 6, without being told, it's also equal to? Right, and now we're working backwards. We need the polynomial in standard form. Subtract 3i. x minus 3i. Add 3i plus 3i minus root 6 x minus root 6 add root 6 I know I'm you're right yes <laughs> yeah you're right. I need to sound more chipper and next everyone no you're right it is true I actually thought that so I'm gonna change my phone but. so x minus 3i times x plus 3i times x minus root 6 times x plus root 6. Now then remember, if you're multiplying four things together, multiply two together, multiply two together, multiply that together. Yeah. Next rule, should you multiply the conjugates together? Yeah. Yes, very much a requirement. Yeah. So didn't we just do this one a second ago? Yeah. So didn't we just get x squared plus 9? Now over here, let's multiply this out. I'm going to show my work for this one. x times x is x squared. Then plus x root 6, right? Minus x root 6, minus, isn't that a 6 times a 6? Yeah. Minus root 36. So now let's combine like terms, ding, ding, gone. So x squared minus root 36. What is root 36? So we have x squared minus 6. They all will come out nice and gorgeous, but now don't we need to multiply that to that? Okay, let's go ahead and multiply these out. x squared times x squared, x to the fourth. x squared times negative six, negative six x squared. Positive nine times x squared, positive nine x squared. Positive nine times negative six. And then when we combine like terms, x to the fourth. Perfect, we just found the polynomial that gave us those solutions. Now look, if I said solve this, wouldn't it be a u substitution? Yeah, so but we're just working back. Well, if we did, though, we could check to make sure we've done it right. So we don't need to. I'm just saying. Okay, awesome. Okay, that's almost done. Okay, look at 28. Last one. It says write a polynomial in standard form with the given roots. So x equals negative 1. Should I write x equals 1? No. No. -ho -ho. That conjugate root theorem does not work with whole numbers or fractions. Just imaginary and irrational. Okay, x equals what? 3 plus i. Do you see how I wrote x? A lot of people forget to write x equals for this one for some reason. So there's two terms. I think that must be why. And then x equals 3 minus i, doesn't it? 
Okay, let's work backwards using algebra. It needs to be set equal to zero. Add one. So we have x plus one equals zero. Use algebra here. Now it needs to add up to be zero. How am I gonna get positive three over? Subtract three, right? Wouldn't that make that zero? So minus three. Now how am I gonna get positive i to be zero? Subtract i as well. So we're subtracting i. So now look what happens. We have an x minus three minus i from that side. And now look, it truly does equal zero. Over here, right here, how do we get rid of positive three? Yep, we have minus three. And then how do we get rid of negative i? Yep, so then we're gonna have x minus three plus i from there. And look, it really does equal zero. And now before they were split apart, they used to be multiplied together. Now multiplying this out is gonna be a little bit more advanced. You can do it, guys. We can do advanced things in here. You, you need to give yourself more credit. Here we go. Should I multiply these two together? No. Nope, these two together, because they're conjugates. Focusing very carefully. This one is advanced. Let's do it, though. I know you can do hard things in here, guys. You've been doing really, really well. Here we go. X times all that stuff. X times X. X times negative three, negative three X x times positive i. Won't that be positive i x? Now watch what I'm going to do. We've taken care of x. Let's just show you negative 3. Negative 3 times x. Negative 3 times negative 3 plus 9. Negative 3 times positive i minus 3i. I'm even going to change colors. I have a girl last year that would bring her little colored pencils and do it in different colors to help. Negative i times x, negative i x, negative i times positive 3, so I'm going to cross that out, right here, plus 3i, right? And then negative i times positive i, negative i squared. So you're saying that this is minus negative 1? Plus one, isn't I squared negative one, everybody? So this is really minus negative one, so plus one. Okay, awesome. Combine like terms. We have x squared, cross them out as you go. Now careful, don't, don't. I mean, use your brain. Negative three x minus three x is negative six x. And then look, we have positive i x minus i x, those cancel out. Positive three i and negative three i cancel out. So we have plus nine plus, one. Now look, didn't it come out nice and gorgeous? They all will. If you have eyes still, you've messed up. Did you hear that? They will all come out beautifully. If you have eyes, you've done something wrong. Start over. Now we'll multiply in x plus one. Last step, multiply in x plus one. Let's go quick. This is our last one. x times x squared x cubed. x times negative six x, negative six x squared x times positive 10 plus 10x. 1 times x squared is 1x squared. 1 times negative 6x is negative 6x. 1 times positive 10 plus 10, combine like term. So the original polynomial that gave us those three solutions was x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4x plus 10. Who would have known? That's how you do this. It's the same. Yep. So you will finish the worksheet. You know how to do everything. Finish the worksheet. If you need one-on-one -on -one help with P over Q, watch the video or come in and I am available before and after school. This is a huge portion of the test.